To keep yourself updated, subscribe to Indigo Learn and click the bell icon and download our app OneFin to start learning on the go. Before we proceed further, let me tell you first one very interesting point that this concept customs import of goods at concessional rate of duty rules 2017 have been superseded with effect from 9th September 2022. So with effect from 9-9-2022, this customs import of goods at concessional rate of duty rules 2017 has been replaced with customs import of goods at concessional rate of duty or for specified end use rules 2022. So henceforth, with effect from 9-9-2022, the title of this rules is customs import of goods at concessional rate of duty or for specified end use rules 2022 subject to small changes at different different rules more or less the concept remains same specified end use means dealing with the goods in such manner as specified in the notification and it also includes supply of goods to the intended recipient and the word end use recipient shall be construed accordingly so in simple terms what they are trying to say is that specified end use means please use these goods for a specific purpose for which it is specified in the notification or you supply it to a such kind of person who is an intended recipient and he is using for such end use. That is what is the simple terms meaning of this language of specified end use. The reason being very clearly with effect from 9922, the name of these rules have been changed where they change the language to customs import of goods at concessional rate of duty or specified end use rules 2022. That means basically the goods should have been imported at concessional rate of duty or goods have been imported for specified end use then this rules of 2022 will come into picture one more interesting point my dear friends that is this word output service has been amended in this particular new rules where they have specified that output service means any service excluding after sale service utilizing the imported goods so output service means any service except after sale service utilizing the imported goods. So basically what they are trying to specify is that output service means supply of any service excluding after sale service and that service is being given utilizing the imported goods. So output service means supply of any service excluding after sale service utilizing the imported goods. That is the meaning of this definition of output service as per the latest rules of 2022. In this context of rule 4 my dear friends, the same rule is being continued even in customs import of goods at concessional rate of duty or for specified end use rules 2022 but subject to few small small changes wherein in rule 4 we have specified as to what all details are to be submitted by importer all the details remain same but where we have a word called particulars of exemption notification applicable that word exemption has been removed and they have specified as particulars of notification applicable because it could not be straight away exempt it could be used for a specified end use that is also possible that's why that's one more small change has been done where they removed that word exemption notification with just the word notification apart from that importer when he is submitting information he is also required to give two three more interesting information apart from details what we just discussed that is he should also give the details of the following that is number one premises intended to be used in case of unit transfer so the goods are transferred from one unit to another unit which premise he wants to use that details have to be given Next, details of end use recipient in case where goods are used for a specified end use. Then who is the end use recipient? That details to be given. Last one, the particulars or the details of the intended ports of import. Which port you want to import the goods should also be disclosed in the one-time information given by the importer. So these two, three points are extra added by the latest rules of 2022. Restore information and data of rule 4 remains the same. 
In this rule 6 my dear friends, we have discussed very clearly what all data has to be maintained by the importer. In that we had one point that importer should maintain the details of the quantity of the goods re-exported as per rule 7. In fact, the rule 7 which was talking about the concept of re-export and clearance of unutilized or defective goods has now been changed to rule number 10. So all the concept remains same, we just have to forget that rule 7 and remember as rule 10. So in case of importer maintain information, he must maintain information and data related to quantity of goods re-exported as per rule 10. So you have to understand this concept that this change has been done only by virtue of customs import of goods at concessional rate of duty or for specified NDU's rules 2017. The whole thing what you have to understand is that the old rules which were there in 2017 have now been replaced by 2022 with some amount of small small cosmetic changes. That's it. This rule 6a and 6b which I just mentioned which is talking about the concept of sending the goods for job work and also unit transfer this has been titles have been changed in fact rule numbers have been changed by customs import of goods at concessional rate of duty or for specified end rules 2022 in the latest rules of 2022 rule 6a has become rule 7 and rule 6b which is about unit transfer has become rule 8. Content wise, data wise, everything is same, matter wise, everything is same, but 6a has become rule 7 and 6b has become rule 8. So in case of job work, rule 7 will apply and in case of unit transfer, rule 8 will apply, but the entire content remains same. And as I just told you my dear friends sometime back that this is no more rule 6a and 6b, it is rule 7 and rule 8. Just that rule number has been changed but the whole concept remains the same even in 2022 rules also. So in case of job work it is rule 7 and in case of unit transfer it is rule 8. Now let's move forward to rule 9 my dear friends. Friends, as I was just discussing with you that in 2022 the earlier rules of 2017 has been superseded and the title has now become customs import of goods at concessional rate of duty or for specified end use rules 2022 my dear friends now let's talk about rule 9 which deals with the concept of specified end use in fact the goods which have been imported are being used for a specified end purpose then he can avail the benefits of the notification and earlier rule 7 that is re-export or clearance of goods has now become rule 10 because rule 9 is a new insertion let's see that now the importer shall maintain a record of goods supplied to the end use recipient during the month and mention the same in the monthly statement referred to in sub rule 2 of rule 6 already we discussed this point my dear friends that in rule 6 importers required to maintain information and submit a monthly statement next importer shall send the goods under an invoice or wherever applicable through an e-way bill specified in CGST act mentioning the description and quantity of the goods so he shall send the goods under an invoice and through e-way bill also mentioning clearly the description and quantity of goods next point in case of supply for replenishment or export against supply the end use recipient shall what is that language my dear friends in case of supply for replenishment the goods have been replenished or export against supply end use recipient shall maintain an account of receipt of goods manufacturing process undertaken thereon and the waste generated if any during such process so you should maintain a account of receipt of goods manufacturing process that is undertaken and the waste that is generated next produce the account details before the jurisdictional customs officer as and when required by the said officer who has to maintain all this the end use recipient should maintain then Produce relevant details to the importer for fulfillment of the benefit under the notification. So in case where the goods have been used for specified end use, these provisions will apply which is related to rule 9. Come on my dear friends, as I told you sometime back that this concept of re-export or clearance of unutilized or defective goods is no more rule number 7. It is henceforth rule number 10 in the latest rules of 2022. The logic is very simple 6a 6b has become rule 7 rule 8 
and they added a new rule, rule 9, relation to specified end use and rule 10 is re-export or clearance of unutilized or defective goods. So don't remember as rule 7, please remember as rule 10. Before I proceed further my dear friends, let me tell you one interesting point that is this re-export or clearance of unutilized or defective goods must be done within the time period which is specified in the notification and if no time period is specified in the notification then that re-export or clearance must be done within a period of 6 months and the set period of 6 months may be extended for another maximum 3 months by the jurisdictional commissioner provided he is satisfied that there is no delay from the point of view of importer. So there, there is no delay on behalf of the importer. In that case, the set period of six months can be extended for another maximum three months by jurisdictional commissioner. Before I proceed my dear friends, let me tell you one more important point that is in recovery of duty in certain cases, the concept is same even in the updated latest rules but the rule 8 number has become rule 11. Sir, so in simple terms, let me highlight the list of all the rules once again so that we get a complete clarity of thought. Rule 4 talks about importer to give one time prior information and rule 5 was about procedure to be followed. Rule 6 is documents or records to be maintained. Rule 7 is job work. Rule 8 is unit to transfer. Rule 9 is specified end use. Rule 10 is about clearance or re-export of unutilized or defective goods. Rule 11 is recovery of duty in certain cases. So rule numbers have been changed in the latest rules but more or less the content is the same. Finally my dear friends as per the latest rules of 2022 that is customs import of goods at concessional rate of duty or for specified end use rules 2022 let me highlight all the rules once again that is rule 4 talks about importer to give one time prior information rule 5 is the procedure to be followed rule 6 talks about importer to maintain records rule 7 is related to job work rule 8 unit transfer rule 9 is talking about specified end use rule 10 re-export or clearance of unutilized or defective goods rule 11 recovery of duty in certain cases finally one more new rule has been added in this latest rules that is rule 12 which talks about penalty in case of contraventions of the provisions of the law or of this rules and notification then obviously penalty provisions will apply Friends, with this discussion, we have understood what are all the rules which are there in the latest rules of 2022 related to import of goods at concessional rate of duty or for specified end use. Let's see the actual content of the last rule, rule 12, which deals with the concept of penalty. Let's see that now. Penalty, rule 12, the importer or the job worker who contravenes, that is violates any of the provisions of these rules or abate such contravention abate means who is helping to do something wrong so there are two things my dear friends one somebody who is doing something wrong number two somebody is helping the other person doing wrong so importer or a job worker who contravenes any of the provisions of these rules or abate such contravention shall be liable to a specified penalty without prejudice to any other action which may be taken under the act rules or regulations made there under or under any other law for the time being in force. So without prejudice, without affecting any other legal provisions, penalty also will apply for somebody who does contravention of any of the provisions of these rules. So that is the end of story of this interesting rules of 2022, my dear friends, which talks about import of goods at concessional rate of duty or for specified end use rules 2022. Friends, in this context of valuation under customs, we know that this topic is a very, very interesting and important topic which comes in exam almost every time. One interesting amendment has been made by Finance Act 2022, where they have specified in section 14 stating that board has got power to frame some rules in relation to some specific additional obligation or additional checks which importer has to maintain that means some additional obligation which importer has to fulfill or the additional checks which importer has to maintain in order to ensure that the declared value by the importer is correct 
and the board may specify what are all the additional documentation information to be maintained and they will also specify for what class of goods is required having regard to the trend of the goods which is going on or having regard to any other circumstance or reasons as they may specify. So in simple terms what I am trying to say is that by virtue of section 14 where they made an amendment by finance act 22 where they added one extra point stating that board has got power to frame rules in relation to additional obligations of the importer or the specific checks importer has to maintain so as to prove and evidence that the value declared by the importer is correct and the board may specify these kind of rules having regard to trend of the goods which is going on having regard to the trend of the declared value and any other reasons or circumstance that they may have ultimately they have added one provision in the law so that in future if board wants to frame some rules they can frame some rules and specify something like if you are importing copper you have to maintain this additional obligation you have to maintain these additional checks like that board can specify the rules in order to specify the rules power should come from the law so in law they made amendment and they gave power to the board to frame rules for any specific class of goods so that importer has to maintain additional obligations or additional checkpoints. The whole idea behind bringing this kind of amendment by Finance Act 22 and giving power to the board to frame the rules is only to ensure that there is no undervaluation or under declaration of the transaction value. Ultimately, government does not want to lose any kind of revenue. That's the whole intention that value has to be correctly declared. They have given power to the board to specify rules so that in any specific class of goods, they will specify what are the additional obligation and the checks to be fulfilled by the importer so as to ensure that value is correctly assessed. Before we proceed to next point, my dear friends, I'll tell one two interesting amendments which have come up recently, which is important. Point number one. With respect to foreign trade policy 2015-2020, we discussed that it was extended up to 31st March 2022 and post that my dear friends, it has been extended to 30th September 2022 and recently they also extended this up to 31st March 2023. In fact, that 2015 to 2020 policy which is actually valid for a period of 5 years is keeping on going on extending. Ultimately, right now, after the amendment, this is valid till 31st March 2023. Hopefully, after 31st March 23, a new foreign trade policy may come into picture. So, from examination standpoint, FTP 2015 to 2020 is valid up to 31st March 2023. Next interesting amendment, my dear friends, that is, in case of imports under Advanced Authorization Scheme or EPCG or EOU, EHTP, STP or BTP scheme, there was an exemption from IGST and GST compensation says that means that is not required to be paid and this exemption was there only up to 30th June 2022. Now the date has been removed. That means there is no specific time limit up to which exemption is available so that date has been removed so exemption is being continued so in case of imports under advanced authorization scheme or epcg or eou ehtp btp or stp scheme then there is an exemption from payment of igst and gst compensation says in case of imports this was actually only till 30th June 22 but they removed that cutoff date of 30th June 22 so exemption is being continued till when we had to wait and watch as of now they just removed the date so exemption is being continued exemption is being continued means exemption is available without any time restrictions in case of imports under advance authorization scheme or EPCG or EOU, EHTP, BTP, STP scheme, there is an exemption from payment of IGST and GST compensation says without any time restriction. Friends, one more very, very interesting and latest amendment, my dear friends, probability that question can come in the exam. That is, let's say for a second, there is one person, Mr. A, who is an importer or exporter. That means he is bound to follow the foreign trade policy. And let me tell you one interesting point, my dear friends, as per the foreign trade policy, every export contract or invoicing should be made either in foreign currency, that means freely convertible foreign currency or in Indian rupees. 
but the payment must be received in freely convertible foreign currency. However, in specific cases only INR was allowed. But this point has been amended in 2022 where they have specified that all export or import contract invoices payments can be made in Indian rupees also through a special Vostro account. This is a very very interesting amendment which has come up in foreign trade policy. So friends, let's look at the language in the amendment which has been done, which I just told you that invoicing, payment, mechanism, settlement, everything can now happen in Indian rupees through a special rupee Vostro account. And I'm sure you guys know that Vostro account is such kind of account where one bank maintains with another bank. See that now. Now, after the amendment, invoicing, payment and settlement. Invoicing, payment and settlement of exports and imports has also been made permissible in Indian rupees. Accordingly, settlement of trade transactions in INR may also take place through special rupee Vostro accounts opened by authorized dealer banks in India in accordance with following procedure. Very simple procedure actually. First one, Indian import importers undertaking imports through this mechanism shall make payment in INR which shall be created into special Vostro account of the corresponding bank of the partner country against the invoices for supply of goods or services from the overseas seller or supplier. So basically amount will be created to the special rupee Vostro account. Then Indian exporters undertaking exports of goods services through this mechanism shall be paid the export proceeds in INR from the balances in the designated special Vostro account of the correspondent bank of the partner country. That is how the procedure which is followed. So now invoicing, payment, settlement, everything can happen through Indian rupees through a special Vostro account.